I got kind of carried away this week, and how many were thinking about my friend this week? That, that one that had 30 children. Did anybody think about him this week and have, have mercy on him? Did y'all think about him this week? Because I, I couldn't get away from him. He, he kept coming to me, trying to tell me stuff, and I, I was trying to figure out, well, who is this guy? I be Zan, you know? And, uh, and, and so I, I just, I brought y'all something this morning, you know, and I brought it in, in, in my bag. And uh, I'm, I'm going to open it in a minute, but, but uh, I, I got to go, uh, look at somebody and say, you got to go uh, to facts on file. You got to go to the facts on file. You know, and, and, and we're going to Psalm 119, but we're going to jump all the way back to verse 73. Amen? And then if I get a chance, I might, I might go over to Jeremiah chapter 18. You can write him down too, Jeremiah chapter 18. See, Jeremiah knew what he was talking about. He, he knew all about serving the Lord, amen? amen. And, 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 of course, in Jeremiah uh, chapter 18, verse 1 is what we're going to jump back to. But, <laughs> but over in chapter 30, Jeremiah said in verse 17, For I will restore health unto thee, and I will heal thee of all thy wounds, saith the Lord, because they call thee an outcast. Yeah. They call you a name, but God said, I'm going to still heal you. Amen. Praise God, amen. amen. They put you out and say you ain't no good, but God said, I still love you. Yeah. Amen. amen. Now, I just put that verse out there so you understand that, 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 that today's message is dealing with, last week we was talking about the challenge of life. Mm -hmm. I wanted to add a little bit to something to that today. It's called Facing Life Challenge with Soul Power. Somebody said, I got soul power. Wait a minute now. I know Jane Brown said he had some soul power. He do a split and everybody holler and scream, get all excited when he got, you know, I saw him in person. If you never seen him in person, he was an incredible individual. But he ain't invent soul power. He came up with a song, If You Got Soul. And I know he meant well because he was a church going man. Now, I ain't saying what happened to his life. I'm just trying to tell you, you just can't come up with these songs and not know about the soul. Because it's God who created the soul. Somebody say amen. amen. And when God created you and brewed in you the breath of life, man became a what? So that means God gave you soul power. Look at somebody and say, I got soul. Soul power. Now I know you heard people running around in the street and talking trash, talking about black power, white power, red power. Yellow power, I'm one of them. Come on, somebody. Green power, you know, that's money power. Gold power, silver power, young power, oil power, male power, female power, run power, power power, fight the power, lie power. Come on, somebody. But I'm here to tell you, we got that real power. We got soul power. Look at somebody touching by the hand and say, I got soul. I got soul. Real soul power. My God, you might not have been born with a silver spoon in your mouth. You might not have diamond doorknobs hanging around. Oh, don't get me started. Come on, somebody. Look at somebody and say, don't waste your time on being mean. Don't waste your time on being mean. Oh, my God. It's a big world, and there's a lot going on today. I want to thank my mama, and I want to thank my daddy. Oh, y'all ain't hearing me talking this morning. I want to thank my mama and I want to thank my daddy because they planted a tree a long time ago. And that tree that they planted a long time ago give me shade today. Oh, y'all ain't with me right now. I mean, not only does it give me shade, it get, that, that tree grow fruit, and I'm enjoying the fruit of their labor. Are y'all with me this morning? So you see, I can face life challenge knowing what my ancestors and my mother and my father and I, my grandparents, what they went through in order for me to face the face challenge. Why? Because I got soul power. In order for them to survive from Africa to America, in order for the Indians to survive, they had to have some kind of soul power. Amen. Something that would sustain them and keep them. Amen. You go through the scripture, you find out all these men and women throughout the scripture, in order for them to be sustained, they had to have some soul power. Amen. Look at somebody and say, I hope you got some soul power. I hope you got some soul power. Amen. My soul is satisfied. Yeah, 
You can't have your soul satisfied because everything you ever did or said or treated people is down in your soul. Amen? Yeah. And something caused you to be provoked because your soul power, you see, you can't live and you can't die for nobody else. You can't eat and, and, and sleep for nobody else. You can't drink water and go to the bathroom but nobody else. So self, self-preservation kicked in. And when self-preservation kicked in, that's that soul part of you that God gave you. And you got to look at somebody and say, you got to do what you got to do. Now, now, you might not want to hear that kind of preaching. You know what I'm saying? But over in Psalm 119, starting at verse 73, uh, and then we're going to jump back. Amen. Psalm 119, verses 73. And then we're going to try to jump over to Jeremiah, chapter 18. So I, I'm just getting y'all ready. Look to somebody and says, uh, I can faith life challenge. And then throw up your hands and say, because I got soul power. Now, I know during the, during the Olympics and the brothers throwed up the power sign. But even the football players and basketball players throwing up the power sign now. Come on, I got a touchdown. I threw a three-pointer. I hit a home run. Oh, you hear me talking now. Come on, somebody. You see, Jeremiah understood that. And, but, but, but David wanted you to know in verse 73, thy hands, thy hands, and I can say, Lord, have made me. You didn't make yourself. But God made you. But when God made you, he fashioned me. He shaped and molded me. Give me and gave me understanding that I may learn thy commandments. They that fear thee will be glad when they see me. Come on, somebody. You got family members. You know how... They get all excited when they see you. Don't y'all look at me like that. When I see my brothers and sisters and family, even my grandson, I love it when they come running to me because they're glad to see me. I, I learned that fire art are not, are not uh, uh, weighing out your welcome. Look at somebody and say, when you go to visit, you go to visit. Let, your visit let your visit be short. And then they'll be glad to see you the next time. Because <laughs> if you stay too long, Come on, somebody. I, I, see, I'm, you know, I, 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 I have to say this because it's important that you and I understand that people should be glad to see you. That's what, ain't that what David said? Yeah. And they that fear thee will be glad when they see me because I hope in thy word. I know, O Lord, that thy judgment are right and thou art and faithful and has afflicted me. Let I pray thee thy mercy, merciful kindness, be for my comfort according to thy words unto thy servant. Verse 7, 7 says, Let thy tender mercy. Y'all like tenders over there, Popeye's chicken? You, you like Tina Roni? Come on, somebody. Let thy tender mercies come unto me that I may live. For thy law is my delight. It is the inward man that delight in the law of God. Let the proud be ashamed, for they dealt perversely with me. They didn't treat me right. They cast me off, but God still said he's going to heal me. God still said he's going to deliver me. God still said he's going to meet my need. And with me, without a cause, but I will meditate in thy precepts. Now, everybody say precepts. The word precept means a general rule about how to behave or what to think. God got beautiful ways to think if we'll stick with his precepts, and his precepts will keep you out of trouble. Amen. Ain't that right? Amen. Verse 79 says, Let those that fear thee turn unto me, those that have known thy testimonies. Let thy heart be sound in thy statutes steadfast, that I not be ashamed. You ain't got to never worry about being ashamed, especially serving the Lord. Amen? So, so I was telling y'all this week, before I go on with the scriptures, I got something for y'all. I came up with this great idea. Mm -hmm. Pass that around so everybody can see my idea. Last week I talked about a man by the name of 
I'll be there. Come on, somebody. And, and I couldn't help, but I couldn't get away from him. And I got to thinking that man born and that man died in Bethlehem. He had 30 sons and 30 daughters. He found, this was remarkable, he found husbands for his daughters and he found wives for his son. I got to thinking he must have had some property and land because when you think about 60 children, I got to thinking, I wonder was this by one woman or did he have several wives? They had to kill about two cows a day. They went through a whole bushel of all kinds of fruits and vegetables. You, you, you can't even imagine feeding 60 people every day and sustaining them. But yet, I got trouble because I had this idea. And I got to thinking, what kind of man is this? So, so I couldn't find nobody else in the Bible that was equivalent, so I had to go to the book of Genesis of World Records. <laughs> oh, y'all ain't with me this morning. Somebody said he got an idea. Lord, have mercy. I went over to the book of Genesis of World Records. Now, 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 there, there are some things I couldn't find in the Bible, so I don't have no problem about going. And I went into this section of birth and life, and I was just, I was just blown away. The first thing that hits you is the most prolific mother. There was a mother, and in, in this, this is not scripture now, this is Book of Genesis record. It says, the greatest record of number of children born to one woman is 69. Whoa. I figure y'all get that. Now, wait a minute. One woman, 69 children? To the first wife of this Russian, she had 27 pregnancies in 1725, and it lasts to 1765. She gave birth to 16 pairs of twins, seven triplets, four sets of quadruplets, only two of the children failed to survive their infancy, and the mother also held a record for giving birth to the most set of twins and the most set of quadruplets. Wait a minute. This woman gets in the book of the world records. I mean, it's one thing to get into the Bible or get in the book of world records, but when you're in the Bible, come on, somebody. There are other things, uh, the greatest descendants of, uh, was uh, 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 from a country where the descendants was incalculable. And, and, and this was the part of Morocco was born a total. And this man, I, 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 just, I just, Lord have mercy. I had to sit this book down. Because this one man, he fathered 525 sons, 342 daughters. This is, now y'all think I'm making, this is the book now. I'm a, This was back in 1703, and he, he achieved his 700th son. He had 700 sons by 1721, the most recorded living descendants of that individual was 824 by Samuel Mass, who lived in the good old U.S. of A. Wow. 824 children? I mean, they didn't have no plasma TV back in them days. And they didn't have no other extracurriculum activity. The most delivered children at birth, now I'm just giving you the records here now. I told you I had to go to the book. I know some of y'all shaking your head. Now, now, I thought that man who had 30 children, I'd be saying, and I said, that, that's just amazing. But in Austria, the highest medical record number of the children born at a single birth is nine at one time. And that's in Sydney, Australia. It goes on to say there was the longest interval between one child and another was the longest interval between the two children by the same woman was 41 years. 
She had one child back in 1956, and the next child she had one in 97. That was a long time between children. They were premature. They're the oldest mother. They're the oldest living man. They're the oldest man that ever lived. He lived 120 years old, the oldest woman that ever lived. She lived, she lived uh, uh, 114 years, the oldest woman that ever lived. Uh, the ever lived was 122. The oldest living male twin, the oldest living uh, congenital twins, the oldest Chinese twins, they lived to be, uh, they lived to be 112 Chinese twins. The quadruplets, now you, 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 when you get a chance, you got to go in the book of records yourself and look. So I, I go right back to say that I came up with this idea. This idea is that God can make all things possible. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. When I went to the facts file, and that's one of my facts files, because I have to do my homework before I come to church, I found out that over in verse 97 of Psalm 119, it says, Oh, how I love thy law. It is my meditation day and night. You have to meditate on God's word day and night. Thou, through thy commandment, has made me wiser than my enemies. You are wiser than you can possibly imagine. For they are ever with me. I am more understanding than all my teachers put together. For thy testimonies of my meditation. You had to thank God what he done for you. You had to put your hand together and thank God for what he done for you. Amen. When you're facing life challenge, I'm thinking about all these men and women in the book of Genesis and how long they lived and how many children they had. They were facing life challenges every day. And I'm going to tell you, in order for you to face life challenge every day, you got to come up with a great idea called having soul power. I hope a light go off in your head. Now, some of y'all trying to figure out how he turned that light off and on. All you do is mash the bottom. Uh-huh. See, y'all pass around. Did he know you had to mash the bottom? Come on, look to somebody and say, the bottom line. The bottom line. You got to have soul power. If you're going to fight this good fight of faith, your soul is involved. This is a spiritual warfare. You got to fight the good fight of faith, but you got to have soul power. Power to help you to overcome every circumstance and every situation that come up. It doesn't matter how many children you have. It doesn't matter what you've been through. you got to have soul power. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Mm, mm, mm. Precept is a general rule about how God thinks. God said, my ways are not your ways. But God said, I would love for you to think like I think. Your, your ideas are not my ideas, but I would love to, for you to incorporate my ideas and how I think. God said, even though you go about your day-to-day -day activity, I want you to include my precepts and my concepts and my commandments and my statutes in your everyday living. Amen. Why is this so important? Because you got soul power. Amen. Amen? Amen? I have not departed, he said in verse 101. I understand more than the ancient, those that are older than me, because I keep thy what? You keep those rules and laws in your mind. I have refrained my feet from every evil way that I might what? Keep thy what? I'm just taking my time so you understand. I have not departed from thy judgment, for thou hast taught me how sweet are thy words. Everybody say, Lord, thank you for your sweet word. Lord, you Sometimes, you know, Jesus is so good to me. I said, sweet Jesus. Sweet Jesus. Sweet Jesus. Sweet Jesus. How sweet are thy words unto my taste. Yea, sweeter than the honey oh, yeah. in my mouth. Yeah. Through thy precepts, thy rules and regulations that govern my life, Give me soul power that I can understand and therefore I hate every false way. I got an idea today that God is going to take us from faith to faith. Come on, somebody. He's going to move all the mountains out of your way. God is giving you power deep down in your soul. Soul that will able to speak to the angels above. That God will hear your cry when you're in need. Ain't that right? 
Jeremiah was told by God, go down to the potter's house. Yes, sir. Go and observe what he's doing on the wheel. Yes. You'll find that he's working with clay on the wheel. Yes. And you'll find out that the potter's hand never leads to clay. Amen. God is always working on your behalf. Amen. God is always shaping and molding your life. Yes, I said I got an idea today that God is working on your behalf. God is trying to fix you so he can use you. Yeah. But it's going to take soul power. Yeah. It's going to take everything you believe and trust in the Lord yeah. in order for God to bring you to where you got to go. Yes, Sometimes there are places in your life you're going to have to walk alone. Yeah. Mama won't be there. Daddy won't be there. Brother sister won't be there. But if you got soul power, yeah. you can call on the God. Yeah. For he said, out of your belly shall flow what? When that living water begins to flow, you will recognize I don't have time to waste to be mad. I want to be happy in Jesus. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Jeremiah realized the power of God is in his hand. And whatever God decides to do is all right with me. Look at somebody and say, I got soul power. And I can face life's challenge. It isn't wonderful to know that God gave you power, yeah. that Holy Ghost power yeah. that's deep down in your soul that will cause you to overcome every obstacle and situation that are happening. Yeah. Isn't it wonderful to know that not only did he give you soul power, yeah. but he took the time to write your name down in the Lamb's Book of Life. Yeah. That's enough to get happy about. Yeah. That's a great idea, ain't it? Yeah. That God got a book that your name is in it. Yeah. Everybody want to either write a book or read a book or know about a book. Come on, somebody. But I'm going to tell you, the best book you can get your name in is the Lamb's Book of Life. Somebody say amen. amen. Somebody say amen. amen. You ought to be glad because when, when Jesus sent out the 70s and, and, and 35 pairs, he said, I want you to go in every city, every town that I would go, every place, every hamlet, Every little town, every little neighborhood, I want you to go and don't take no money. Don't take no scrap. Don't take no shoe. This ain't going to be a long journey because it's going to be 35 of y'all. Uh -huh. And you go in my name, healing those that are sick and delivering those that need to be delivered. Do it in my name. And the Bible says after a period of time, they all gathered together again and they came back so excited. Somebody said, I'm glad in Jesus. I'm glad in Jesus. My name is written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. If you don't speak it, how are you going to know it? Come on, somebody. You got to speak it. Come on, somebody. Not only speak it, but you got to live it. Amen. I came up with this idea that when Jesus told them to go everywhere, they went everywhere, and they covered all the places that he himself would win. See, time was getting shorter. He knew he was ready to be taken out. So he said, go. But they got so excited. They came back laughing, rejoicing. Being happy, and when they were healing people, a light went off. Bing. When they were delivering people, a light went off. Bling. When they were delivering demons, a light went off. Bling. When they were doing wonderful things in the name of Jesus, light kept going off. Did you see that? In the name of Jesus, that spirit jumped. The devil began to speak. Come on, somebody. The deaf and dumb begin to speak and talk and listen. The blind eyes were open. Did you see that man that was dead? And we had hands on him. In the name of Jesus, he raised up from the dead. I know I got soul power. And I'm happy and my soul is satisfied. Look at somebody say, I got soul power. They came back so happy telling Jesus. Jesus said, wait a minute. I'm the one who sent you out. You went out in my name. You came back rejoicing and being happy. Because scorpions, serpents, demons, people were delivered. You see, a, a light went off. Bing. He said, I know you're happy. And he didn't want to kill their joy. He said, but I got greater joy. I got more powerful joy. Just because you got soul power, you got to get happy at the fact that your name, don't be, don't be amazed or overcome by the fact that spirits are subject to you. Rejoice because your name. Yes, Lord. 
Your name. Your name. Yes. Look at somebody say, your name. Your name. I say your name. Your name. That's a new name. It's written down in glory. God is protecting it. The angels are present. You got soul power. Your soul is satisfied. You ought to be glad when you speak the word of God that the angels are there to accompany your thoughts. Whatever you're going through or dealing with, I want you to know you have authority with God because your name is written down in the book. It might not be at the governor's office. It might not be down at the White House. You might not never see the White House. Come on, somebody. You might not never visit a president. You might not never be on a team that will visit the White House. You might not even go to the governor's mansion. But there's one place and one mansion you're going to. Come on, somebody. Jesus said, in my father's house are many mansions. And if it was not so, I would not have told you. So I go to prepare a place for you, and where I am, that he may be also. Look at somebody and say, a light should have went off in your head. I think there's a commercial that says, when the light goes off, they got a better idea. Ain't that right? Huh? And I'm here to tell you, Thomas Edison might invent the bulb, but it was Louis Latimer, a black man, that invented the filament. Are y'all with me on this? You see, we are part of this existence. Come on, somebody. The harder man try to get rid of you, the more God will deliver you. The harder man try to do you in, God is going to deliver you. Amen? You see, what's wrong in our neighborhood today? The enemy is so bad with you, he's trying to create what they call genocide of the mind. He did it on the Indians. And he's trying to do it on the man of color. But I'm here to tell you, God is greater than any genocide. You see, genification is a form of deliberately getting rid of a, a group of people or a kind of people. But I'm here to tell you, God's people. And God's anointing is on your life. Why? Because in order for you to sustain genocide, you've got to have soul power. Look at somebody say, I ain't going nowhere until God finished with me. Wait a minute. If you say God ain't finished with you, that means you're still on the potter's wheel. That means God got you going. Come on, somebody. He's shaping and he molding you. And not only that, he took out that stony heart and gave you a heart of flesh so he can shape and mold you based on his word. And when you study his word and live his word, you'll wind up with soul power and you'll be able to do what God commands you to do. Maybe you didn't want to hear this today. Look at somebody and say, I got soul power. I got soul power. Now you really know what soul power means then. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. I know we went through the streets in the 60s. Black power. <laughs> Come on, somebody. And I believe in supporting our people. Come on, somebody. But thank God for salvation. Yeah. Because when man can't put you nowhere, God can give you eternal life. Somebody say amen. I came with an idea that God can deliver you. Amen? amen. You have to thank your mama and thank your daddy. They might not be here, but you have to thank your mama and your daddy for planting that tree. Amen. How many sitting under their mama and daddy shade tree? Amen. Come on, somebody. You sitting under your mama's shade tree. I ain't talking about she went out and planted a tree. Now, some mamas and daddy did plant trees. My mama planted trees all the time. But I'm talking about the tree, the seed of life that she planted in me. My father and mother, they planted a tree. And now that tree is full grown. And I can understand the shade now. I can understand the fruit that comes from that tree. I might not be able to climb the tree. I might not be able to take a stick and knock it down. But I'll wait on this precious fruit. I got an idea. Look at somebody and say, I got an idea. <laughs> that Jesus is coming soon. My, my, my. See, we got to be aware of God's precepts. Wherever you go and whatever you do, when those 70s came back to Jesus, they were so happy. 
When God saved you, you were so happy. Don't lose that joy. Don't lose that strength. Because that's a part of your soul. That's a part of who you are. Nobody can define who you are because it's God who's the one who saved you. No man can define who you are. I don't care where he come from. Nobody can do a number one job on your mind because your mind is hidden in Christ. Huh. Look to somebody and say, huh. you have a gift. Wait a minute. What gift are you talking about, Pastor? You might not be able to play the piano. You might not be able to play the drums. You might not be able to play the violin or the clarinet. But God has given you an instrument. God has given you an instrument of giving. Are y'all with me on this? You might not be able to play any fine instrument. Your voice might be an instrument. But God has given you the instrument of giving. Learn to give out of your heart and out of your spirit. There's an idea that will go off in your head. When God touches your heart, it's because he wants you to do something. Amen. You have a great gift. The instrument of giving. Somebody said, thank you, thank you, Lord, for the instrument of giving. Most people don't even understand when, when we start giving of our time, talent, and treasure, God is trying to bless you. Amen? Amen. He's trying to bless you in more ways than you can possibly imagine. The Bible said one day when Jesus was at the temple, he was watching all the rich men and the rich women coming into the temple, delivering their money unto the back of the church. In those days, they didn't take up the offering like we do. They had a special box in the back, and people would put their money in this special bracket, this special box. And the very rich would pour their money in, and it would make all this noise. And people, you've been down there to, uh, to the... To, to the Stop and shop. Don't y'all look at me like that. Yeah. You pour money all up in that machine. Bling, 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 bling. Everybody looking around to see what you're doing. Amen? Yeah. That's what people do when they was at the church in the old biblical time. They rich pouring all their money. And it was a special carpet, special box that was made out of copper. And those coins, when they hit, they make a distinct noise, and people will look around and see who's putting in the money. But the Bible said that there was this little old riddle. The Bible said that Jesus was observing the rich as they were pulling things, and then a light went off in Jesus' head. Are y'all with me on this? A light went off. And he observed the very rich, pulling in all their hair. And Jesus said, out of the abundance of their wealth, do they give? But this little old widow gave in everything that she had. You know why she gave that one mite that won't worth nothing to nobody else except to her? It's because God had blessed her with the instrument of giving. Look at somebody and say, you might not play no piano, but you play an instrument. You might not play the clarinet, you might not play the trumpet, you might not play the saxophone, you might not play no instrument at all, but God has given you the instrument of giving. Look at somebody, tell somebody, say, you've been blessed because you've been given the instrument of giving. This widow found out that if I give unto the Lord, you see, her husband was gone, her children were gone. All she had was one mite. But when Jesus saw her give that one mite, it only made one ping ping. But I'm here to tell you, the God that we serve sit up high and he looked low. The God we serve is not only the God of the mountain, he's the God of the valley. He can take a rough play and make it smooth. He can take a smooth play and make it curve. It's God's power that's on all you got to do is recognize, Lord, I'm asking you, because if you say my name is written down in the Lamb's Book of Life, you say I can ask what you will. You say I can ask what you will. And it shall, look to somebody said a light should have went off. Look to somebody said a light should have went off. Now, sometimes there are people in the church, the lights are on, but ain't nobody home. I better not have y'all to say that to nobody because somebody's going to get mad. The lights are on. They look like they're looking. 
They look like they're listening. You try to give them good advice. They look like their mind is in the right frame. They dress right. They talk right. You ask them something and their mind leave them. The lights are on, but ain't nobody home. The elevator don't go all the way up the shaft. There are a few bricks from being a full ton. Come on, somebody. There are people that are in trouble today because their lights are on, but they don't get the idea. That Jesus died on the cross for you, and he died on the cross for me, and we are the same of the world. We are light. You and I are alike to this generation. Somebody say amen. amen. Well, I didn't, I didn't bust the light so much that it didn't fell apart. That's all right. I'll get it together. Light's still going to go off and on. Praise God. Amen. amen. We are the light of the world. A light hidden under a bushel going to burn the bush and can't be seen. But if you let this light shine before man, they'll see your good works and they'll glorify your Father, which is in heaven. You ain't never got to worry about being ashamed. You got to always remember, I ain't where I, I, I should be, but thank God I ain't where I used to be. You got to thank God that He brought you from a mighty long way. And yet, you may consider yourself perfect, but I want you to know here and now, God still got me on the wheel. God still is shaping, God still is molding me. Huh. Wait a minute. That woman didn't have a one mic, but Jesus spotted her. You see, God says a man's life did not consist in the abundance of the things in which he possessed. Don't you understand? None of these things that we got here on earth can we take with us. But it's God that gave you what you have. You ought to thank God today for him giving you what? In order for you to get what you got, in order for you to be strong like you are, you had to have soul power. Look at somebody and say, I got soul power. Tap him on the head and say, I got soul power. A light should have went off. I know some of y'all going to have flashbacks. Soul power. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Come on, somebody. It's important that we understand that mom and dad didn't waste their time raising us. It's important that we understand he brought us from a mighty long way. Come on, somebody. Don't let nobody block your blessing. Don't let nobody hold you back. Stop wasting your time being mean. Stop wasting your time being mad. Change that frown to a smile. Come on, somebody. You see, we're born in this world, but this world is not your home. You got to wear this world as a loose garment. You got to go on and do what God calls you to do. Don't worry about what others think about you or what others feel about you. It's important that when Jesus was face to face with a challenge, all his life, he was face to face with challenges. Do you agree with that? How many had challenges this week? I didn't say problems, I said challenges. See, a challenge you can raise for the occasion and deal with the challenge. But when you say, I had some problems, I'm not sure if you solved your problems or not. Look at somebody and say, I hope you face your challenges because you got God's help. And that help that God gave you is soul power. Now see, if Jane Brown were here, <laughs> y'all be right with him. Get it, Jane. Get it, Jane. Tear it up, Jane. Come on. Man. There was a time some of us used to can split. Hey! Don't try that right now. You get down there, somebody's gonna have to help you get up. Somebody say, Lord, have mercy. 
You see, there are some things when you read your sword in the air, a light should go on. There's something you usually can do. Come on, somebody. That was a time in my life I used to get bent back with the test of ground. But now I can barely bend over the test. I know where I'm going with this. It's important that you understand that things in your life that you used to do and life should go on that you need to leave alone. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Wait a minute. You see, you can, you can be blind physically, but you can see spiritually. Wait a minute. The Bible said when Jesus was on his way through the land, he passed through Jericho. And the Bible said there was a blind man by the name of blind Bartimaeus. The Bible said that a man was blind. I mean, when he was blind, it don't tell you what kind of blindness he had because there's a lot of diseases that can steal your eyesight. Thank God for, for ophthalmologists that can do surgery, that can prescribe medication. And I want you to understand something about glaucoma. When glaucoma hit, Short of a miracle, a doctor is going to give you drops that will not improve what you got. The concept is not to improve what you got, but prevent it from getting worse. I don't think y'all got that. Sometimes in life, we want things to improve, but sometimes God is in a way in which he's trying to help you to keep things from getting worse. Look at somebody and say, a light should have went off. If you don't take care of yourself, ain't nobody else going to take care of you. If you don't go to your doctor's appointment and go to your specialist, it ain't nobody's business but your own business. Come on, somebody. And whatever your business is between you and God. My Lord. Look at somebody and say, a light should have went off. Sometimes when you're talking to the wrong person, and you know they're trying to get your business. Uh, there should be a flicker. <laughs> Look at somebody and say, there should be a flicker. Amen. Something should go on. Come on, somebody. Am I talking right? Amen. Huh? Amen. Sometimes you got to keep, come on, somebody. You got to keep things to yourself. I'm, I'm a pastor, and one of the things I love about preaching in other churches, I can talk to the congregation. Because I don't know any secrets. Come on, somebody. When my bishop said, you want to preach? I said, you sure you want me to preach? <laughs> you, you sure you want me to preach all them cousins and relatives out? Because I'll tell on them. <laughs> my wife, she's sitting back there. She'll tell them, I just run them all out of the church. I said, y'all might not want me to come back down here in this country church. Come on, somebody. Oh, they were hungry. Come on, somebody. You talking about hungry, hungry hippo eating up all the marbles? Come on, somebody. They were eating up all the gospel. You got any more? See, when you live right and walk right, a light should go on and you shouldn't be afraid of the light. Because David told us, the word, thy word is a light unto my feet and, and a lamp, lamp unto my feet and a light unto my left. In other words, it's like a flashlight when you're walking in the dark. It'll direct you. That's what the word of God will do when it comes to the precepts. When it comes to the commandment and judgment of God, it'll have you to live right when everybody else is mocking you. Amen. Amen. Wait a minute. Blind bottom is by the wayside bed. All over the poor, anybody got any money? Now keep it in your mind. If you shut your eyes for a moment and stick your hand out, that's what you look like to everybody that's going by you. Are y'all with me on this? Amen. Close your eyes and stick your hand out. That's what you look like with everybody passing by with no eyesight. You don't know who passing you, who didn't see you. They don't know who you are, where you come from. They just see you in the same spot every day. But this day was a different day. This was a day that the Lord has made. This was a day that Jesus was passing through Jericho. And he knew all about blind Bartimaeus. But this day was his day. 
And you ought to understand something, that when Jesus was passing by, he was coming near blind Barnabas, that, that blind Barnabas said, what's going on? What's happening? Somebody said, what'd it be like? Somebody said, if Jesus, listen carefully, if Jesus of Nazareth getting ready to pass by, Wait a minute. You're blind Bartimus. You're blind Bartimus. You ain't got no vision, but you want to see. A light should have went off. When Jesus is near, a light, he took a moment. I heard about this man. I heard that he able. To raise the dead. Yeah, they I heard that those that can't hear, he can unstop the hearing. Yes, those that couldn't talk, he's able to talk. Those that was able, that they were able to walk, now they can walk. If he can do all that for them, I know he can open my eyes. Are y'all with me on this? Our life went off. And this is the light. They said, Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. But blind Bartimaeus said, Jesus, thou son of David, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Wait a minute. He was a blind man, but he couldn't see. He didn't see Jesus of Nazareth, but he saw Jesus, thou son of David. He saw Jesus as the deity of the Father. He saw that he was the anointed one. That means in his brain, a light went off. He ain't just Jesus of Nazareth. He not just Jesus of Bethlehem. Jesus, the son of David. Ha. Jesus kept on walking. People were telling blind Bartimaeus, like people in church are telling him, won't you just shut up? Won't you just be quiet? Why do you keep calling on Jesus? then you should look at them and the light should go off. And when they tell you to be quiet, sit down, sit down, go somewhere, and be quiet, a light should go off. And then when they tell you to be quiet, you say, Jesus! Thou son of David! Have mercy! The Bible said that Jesus stopped. I love it when Jesus stopped. Because when Jesus stopped, yeah. things said, Eep! and then Jesus said, a light went off. Bring him to me. Bring him to me. Blind Bob is on the wayside begging. Been born blind. Been blind for a long time. Ain't seen what leaves look like. Ain't seen what people look like. Ain't seen their houses. Ain't seen the dirt. Ain't seen the ocean. Ain't seen the sky. Ain't seen the bird. Ain't seen nothing. But today is my day. Today I'm going to claim the blessings. Jesus, what would you have me to do for you? He said, Lord, that I might receive my sight. That means the light. Look at somebody and say, a light went off. When that light went off, Jesus says, thy faith have saved thee. And the Bible says immediately, Immediately, just like a good ophthalmologist, he's a homo rapha. He's a great physician. He's 
they play house of They spoke a word. And immediately, immediately the, the optical, reciprocal receptors in the brain begin to kick in. The light begin to reflect off the cornea. The people open up. Are you all with me now? The ganglion nerves begin to be stimulated. Are you all with me? The colors from the sunlight that transform into raw GP begin to transform in this man's eye and immediately his eyes open. Now he was looking just like you and me. Sometimes you got to open your eyes in order to see. Look at somebody say, sometimes you got to open your eyes in order for you to see. Some people walk through life. You know, I, I, listen, Fred, let me just say, it's amazing to me. What's worse than a blind man is a man that got two eyes and can't see. You can feel sorry for a blind man. And you can do everything you can. In fact, some of y'all, you can tell a person when they're blind because when they got that blind stick, Come on, somebody. There's a lot of folks in the church like that today. They tick for tack. Come on, somebody. They got eyes, but they can't see. They hear the preacher, but they ain't listening. They understand what they're hearing, but they ain't putting it into practice. Somebody said tick for tack. What's worse than a, a blind man is a man that got two eyes and can't see. Praise God. This is Pastor Watkins from Community Revival and Outreach Ministries. I trust that you enjoyed that wonderful service we just uh, had, and I trust the Lord that it touched your heart and your spirit, and it also inspired your soul. But beyond just listening to a message, we also ask you to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. And how you do that, you just simply ask and bow before Christ. And if you're willing to lay hands upon your TV or bow your heads right where you are or sitting, if you just bow here with me and we'll pray the prayer of faith. Heavenly Father, we truly thank you for all things in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that you forgive us of all our sins and have mercy upon our soul. And that not only you save us, O Lord, from our sins, but O Lord, that you would sanctify our hearts and sanctify our souls as well as, O Lord, baptize us with the Holy Ghost and that with fire. We accept you, O Lord, into our hearts and our life. We confess our sins and we believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and that God raised him from the dead. And by believing and accepting this, O Lord, we claim to be saved in his holy name. We give thanks and praise for all things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I trust the Lord that your heart is fixed with the Lord and that your blessing will be assured and that you'll come out and fellowship with us. And if not with us, your, your own local church in your area and that God will be a blessing to you until we see you again. Take care and God bless. Bye-bye.